up. Uh, as St. Augustine says, those who teach learn twice. So it helps us in our own faith uh, because we want, we want our, our homes and especially our children to have God in their lives. We want them to have a sense of faith. We want them to have a sense how loved they are because, I don't know about you, but some, there's some days I'm not sure the world loves me very much or that I love me. Um, but at the very foundation of our lives is this God who loves us no matter what. Now, he liked to change some things in our lives, but he, he loves us and made us as these unique creatures, and we want our kids to know that. And then we want to, we're talking about some practices that help build up Christian virtues like love, like mercy, like forgiveness, like service, like giving ourselves over. So the reason that we're having this, this forum and others that will come is that we, we want our kids to have faith, and we want them to live a particular kind of life, though the Christian life is pretty broad. There are certain qualities of our life that we want our kids to live, and thus we're having this class. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this new day and for the gift and challenges of life. We ask that you bless our children and grandchildren, that you bless our homes, that you draw us closer to you, that we may live lives of faith and love and mercy and service. And this we ask in the name of the one who rose from the dead and is coming again, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Emily Given, Director of Christian Formation at St. David's Episcopal Church. So we, we give thanks to those who are actually joining us online as well. And so if you get the weekly email, the handouts for today are in uh, a PDF form. So um, if you're here and you need a handout, um, Molly will be my, my Vanna tonight, but my today. But... If you would like, if you are seeing us and you don't get the weekly email, please send a message. We're actually going to be fielding questions today on my phone and not on the laptop. So I'll be checking that every once in a while. So again, we're just so glad that you are here. I am new. I keep on saying that. I've been here six months, but a lot of that was summertime. So it still feels new. And we're still in this zone where we only sort of see a little bit of one another, literally and figuratively. So I still feel new, but what I'm excited um, what, what most excites me about my work here is that St. David's is unlike probably every church that I have served, where they really like, St. David's is someone who is just willing to do something different. So Liz and I, actually Liz Colton and I just left a, a brand new family service that was just bursting with joy and fun and babies and grandparents and everybody in between. And so part of why we're doing these conversations is to say that that's a really amazing moment to be able to come into this place and over there, but that can't be it. So uh, while worship is at our core and what happens within these walls really are essential to who we are, the, what we're trying to do is to realize that we can't compartmentalize that. So we really want you to think about how this holy place can help you go out into your world and make your homes holy places. So um, someone once said to me, like, I really want to figure out how to make the holy happen in my house. And I thought, that kind of sounds a little bit shady, like somehow, and I was like, I like, I like, and they even sort of did a motion, like, I want to make my house holy. Um, and then it made me think, like, yes, we should all in this sort of exciting way try to figure out how to make all of the places of our lives holy. And so um, when we talk about family, I think it's really important for us to say out loud, while we're talking a lot about children and, and families that have young children, we also recognize that families come in every shape and size. If your children are still in the house with you, if you've never had children, if you are a married person, if you are a, a home and a family of one and you have a, a deep circle of friends, all of that is family. And so what really what we're trying to say, what Frank and I were saying, what was so important is that a life of faith is best done when you're doing it with someone else. There's some deeply personal individual practices that we can do, but I think the real joy comes when we are in a community of faith together and doing, doing those things um, with whomever we consider to be like our closest, most important people. And I, I think about why we don't really do this, right? So we talk about it a lot. Um, and on the staff, we sort of lament, like, how are we going to be able to help connect people in a deeper way? And all of us probably even have, or many of us have, a yearning to even do it. But we don't do it. And probably the reason why we don't is we just don't know how to begin. Um, I think because we have this 
amazing, beautiful uh, corporate worship together, somehow we think that we need to recreate something that is that amazing in our personal lives. And what I think what we want to let you know is that you just need to do it in the way that makes sense to you. There is no one right way to pray. There is your way, and it is good. And of course, there are models. So if you're someone who sort of needs a rule book or, a, or, or steps, we can give those to you, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But also, it's just the invitation to just begin where you are. And um, there's really not an official qualification that comes along with that. I think that we sometimes, including me, um, sort of let that to the professionals. So I really encourage you to claim your own sense of faith and what you want for that to feel like in your home that is very, very unique to your immediate family. So when I think about that, I think about love relationships. So in our homes, they would ultimately want to have that be a place where love relationships blossom. And so the ongoing love relationship with God just makes sense to be in the middle of that. And so, um, so I actually, I jokingly say often, and I probably shouldn't say it on a live stream, but I will tell my friends often, I'm kind of a closet Jew. I, I really would probably, you know, in a lot of ways, be Jewish if I could. And part of that is because the vibrant images, all of the, the moments that they know how to mark and make special. And so also our, our Quaker brothers and sisters talk about how all of life is a sacrament. So if you don't know what the word sacrament means, it means to be, it's, a, it's, an in, it's an outward sign, like something that we do that we can see that models and talks about the inner life that we can't quite see and can't quite put words on. So how do we mark our moments? So communion is, is a sacrament. Baptism is a sacrament. But what if we thought about all of the places in our lives? What if our dinner tables sort of echoed what it meant to come and be at the table for communion? And what if even bath time sort of had that echo of what it is to be baptized? Not that we would baptize somebody ourselves, but what does it mean to think about all the different, very, very mundane, ordinary things that we do and really look at them as sacred and beautiful and holy and that we should wait and watch long enough to notice um, that, you know, you can do a lot of things. Frank was talking last week about how you know, as, as parents or as faith formers, it's our responsibility, kind of like you're on an airplane, to put on your oxygen mask first before you, um, you do for, you, you said talking about picking your favorite child. I won't, I won't go quite there. Well, well, <laughs> well, and you have more than two, so I could sort of do that. You need to go to do zone defense when you do that thing. But um, the concept is how do we care for ourselves first? And so the temptation is to come to something like this and get a ton of ideas of what to do for your kids. And that will happen today a little bit, but what I want to invite us into thinking about is how to nurture ourselves first. And so there's a, there's a bunch of handouts that I'm going to reference off and on, and again, um, there's a PDF online if, if you're not here with us. I think we are told that we are good parents if we are running around all the time and we are making everything possible for our people, right? So if they're in the right sports, if they um, you know, have the, a circle of friends, if they're in school, if they, they're in the right clubs, all of these different things you know, that we create for them, um, that usually sometimes is more about us than really it is about them, by the way, um, that if we could actually just breathe a little bit and realize, I, I served a church in um, what was a bedroom community for Wall Street and Madison Avenue um, in Connecticut, Lower Connecticut, and I had a parent come to me and they were so, so angry because their baby hadn't been picked for baby Jesus. And so I thought, all right, well, this, you know, that's emotional, right? Like everybody wants their baby to be baby Jesus. But then this dad and this mom made an appointment to meet with me. And so this dad is someone who works like on the floor as a traitor. So like to leave that is a sort of a significant moment. I was like, oh no. So they came in and said, we just need, you know, our baby, and they're trying to like give me a resume of why this tiny, tiny little sweet thing was like the perfect baby Jesus. And I said, I understand now. Because if your baby isn't baby Jesus, then maybe they won't get in 
to the preschool. And if they don't get into the preschool, then they're not going to get into the right elementary school. And then, and I'm, and I'm building up all of these levels of if, then, if, then, if, then. And I said, and then, you know, sort of to the nth degree saying like, and then this sweet baby's never going to be president. So I thought I was going to jar this family out of this concept of like, this is just so important. And the dad, I hate to be, you know, to, to pick on the guys, but slaps his hand down on my desk and said, finally you understand. <laughs> and I thought, oh, and every, every fiber in my being thought, if you could just see how deeply you are loved by God, you, dad, you, mom, this baby, all of your life, if you could just see um, who was it? Thomas Merton that talked about we don't realize that we're all walking around shining like the sun. Was that Merton? Um, and I thought, oh, so my invitation to you is to just breathe, to let go of all of these lists that we've decided that we think make a good and faithful right parent. Um, put them down next to you in the pew and just leave them here when you leave because your, your families do, are not served by that. You are not served by that. And so what I wanted to say is start with you. The temptation is to start with your kids. Start with you. And so I was thinking about a couple different things, and I'm going to call on you. Sorry to put you on the spot at, from time to time because I want to hear some of your thoughts too. But the first thing I had said was, and this feels obvious, but just pray. If you do nothing else in your week, simply pray. And so part of that is being concerned again, like if you don't know. So the beautiful thing is, um, Narada, if you're listening or watching somewhere, Narada's our bookstore lady. I snuck into the back room of the bookstore and snagged the rest of the Book of Common Prayers. I promise I will pay for them. Um, the great thing about the Episcopal Church is that we have, if you need some guidance, this amazing thing called the Book of Common Prayer. So if you don't have one, you may take one of these with you today. Um, someone had said to me a long time ago, there is an entire life beyond the dirty strip at, three, at 355. So when we start the service and, um, every Sunday, we're kind of using bulletins right now. But if you look in your pew, there is a distinct dirty mark right down the white. Um, and so when someone said to me, to me I was like, eh. But the reality is, is that what's not, and we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about this next week, but there are, you know, there's all the stuff that we do here, but then there are prayers to, um, short and long versions of prayers for the morning, for noontime, to, uh, in the evening, ones to say before you go to bed. There is a collect, a prayer that collects um, our thoughts about everything under the sun about our children, about the country, about um, times of trial, death, anything that you can think of, there is a whole section, how many, how many guys, how many prayers? Hundreds, hundreds of, of prayers that are two inches long that you can say in the moment. So I encourage you, if you don't have a Book of Common Prayer, please do um, grab one of these. Also, I'm going to say, if you, if you need a bigger print, because I'm a girl who actually has reading glasses, this is a little small. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not look at, at the man who um, is my boss. I'm going to say, take the one that's in front of you in the pew, and I'll just figure out how to replace it. So e what we want saying is, just take it. And if, the, the, if you're sort of anxious about prayer, this gives you a bazillion. This gives you an entire lifetime, actually, of prayers to be said. But again, just we, we invite you to just do it yourself. I was, um, I'm sort of a big Instagrammer. Some of you that, that know me, I'm sort of, I live my life um, online and intentionally. Um, so some people think that that's sort of about attention. And what I have known is that I've, I've, it's a good pastoral care tool. And a lot of people have said to me, I just have a lot of despair in my life, and then I get to see pictures or quotes that you post or things, and it really changes things. So I invite you to think about um, social media. But anyway, what, what this is to say is that I was walking with my dog yesterday morning, and I live on this like sweet little street um, that we just moved into, and there was this tree like I've never seen. And I just stopped and out loud said, wow. There was such a beauty to this Japanese maple tree that was just 
on fire. I mean, I sort of thought about Moses, like, hey, he's out there, and he looks, and he sees this tree, and he says, what is happening? I sort of, like, thought to myself, I wonder what this tree could have been in a signpost in my life. It made me stop and say, wow, and just marvel in, um, in the, the, the creation of God. And so um, Annie Lamott, I don't know if that's Anne Lamott, is someone that you know. She's sort of a, a very popular um, Christian author that has crossed over into New, the New York Times. And she had a book not too long ago that was called Help, Thanks, Wow. And it was just like you could do your entire prayer life with just help, thanks, and wow. So I encourage you, even just as that beginning spot, look around in your days and think about where do you need help? Where could you just stop in a moment and just say thank you? Um, or just marvel at the, at the beauty of God. Jesus was really great about this. He had a good balance of work and rest and prayer. And so I think that's one of those things where we say, gosh, if it was good for Jesus, it's probably something that maybe we ought to think about doing ourselves. And so um, the other thing to do is if your life is so busy, if you just before you even put your feet on the ground in the morning, just take that time to be able to offer up an intention for the day. You know, I, actually here's, this is one of the, one of the handouts is, um, I, I served a church in Dallas, and it was a, while it was an Episcopal church, it was a little bit more evangelical than maybe we would experience here in the North, and um, someone gave me this great idea in a women's group that I belong to, and she said, I just put a prayer on my bathroom mirror, and I switch them out all the time. At first, I was writing them on there with Sharpie, but my husband didn't like that very much, so I switched to finding things and just cutting them out, and so this one actually comes from the Book of Common Prayer, and I encourage you... Um, as one way to begin to pray, and for you who have kids who are old enough to be able to read, this would be then um, something that they could see. Stick this on your bathroom mirror. Um, if, you, if that's not your thing, stick it in the, the visor of your car, whatever it might be. But this is the prayer that I personally pray every morning, um, just to know a little bit more about me. This is another day, O oh Lord. I know not what it will bring, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, Help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. That's the hardest part for me, everyone, just in case you're wondering. <clears throat> and if I'm to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these words more than words and give me the spirit of Jesus. So imagine how your day might be if just simply you took that just minute to be able to just pray that into into your life and then the good news is then your kids will see gosh that must be something that that my grown-ups are using in the house i wonder what that's about i wonder what my prayer would be like i think there are ways we want for our kids and for our important people in our lives to see us praying not so much like pious sort of praying but really having a conversation adding prayer into your family life how do you do that around meals? How do you do that in the morning? Um, you know, how, what are you thinking, Frank? I mean, like, do you have a special prayer practice that you really Well, love? and by the way, that prayer comes right out of the Book of Common Prayer. It's under the ministration to the sick. It's in a really strange place, but it's one of the best prayers in the whole kit and caboodle. It's my favorite. I'm, a, a lot of prayers for, is, is, and a lot of the prayer practices are for introverts. Um, and it's hard for me to start in the morning just to be thinking about God. I need something outside myself, something extra to Frank Allen. And so the prayer book does that. I read through the Bible every year. Um, and so I have something at the beginning of the day, you know, thank you, Lord, for this day. And I, then I get up. Sometimes I fall back asleep. So when you're suggesting we pray in bed like that, just be careful. Um, but that, that's, that's my prayer. And, and to have it, you know, have it on, you know, in your car, that prayer, or other prayers in your car or on your, on your mirror where you're brushing your teeth, it's not sacrilegious. Yeah. Anything you can do to crack your, your life open, God will come in yeah. every time. 
or even use the favorites like the heart function in your phone when you see something on social media if you see something out in the world if you want to take a picture of this if you if you you know once you take the picture if you touch that heart at the bottom of your screen then you can pull those up in, a, in an album so if you're sitting in carpool line or you're at a meeting that just feels like it is really taxing your heart and brain you can be able to um, tap those open and just have your own curated prayer book. So I encourage you to use your phone in different ways like that. Um, so the other things I was thinking about in terms of specific kind of prayers, which is something that we do often at places like youth group, is a high and a low. So how beautiful if you at the dinner table or in the car when you're driving somewhere invited uh, the people that you're with to tell, tell me a high and a low. Sometimes they call it a rosebud and a thorn or whatever the case may be. What was a moment in your day that just felt like you just were alive in your most inner being? And then what was really hard? And then, you know, you can sort of do that in a generic way, but then the invitation is to say, and then where did you, where was God in the midst of that? Where was Jesus? Where did you see the face of Jesus? Where, where did you wish you saw the face of Jesus and you didn't and you're kind of disappointed? Begin to have those really honest conversations about what does it mean to be watching for Christ in, in our everyday lives. So it's the, the high-low kind of thing. Um, and sometimes that can be the most sacred time you spend with your family, even with your friends. I've done that. You know, we thought we were getting together to have a glass of wine and then all of a sudden it became like a high-low um, you know, girlfriend kind of hangout time. So again, this can sort of be used in, in a lot of the places of your lives. One of the other handouts is the five finger prayer. And so this is something usually we use with like little tiny guys. So the concept is if you have your hand like this, the closest one to you are the closest people to you. So you pray for all those that you love the best or are closest to you. The, the pointer finger, the ones that are the ones that show you the way, your mentors, your other important people outside of your family. Your rector. What? Your rector. Yes, yes. Um, but seriously, all those people that, um, that have a responsibility to you in the ways that they shape you. Give thanks and remember those people. Um, the middle finger, which is kind of a little bit contentious right now because of our political life together, but it's supposed to be the leaders, the ones that stand tall for us. Um, so the idea is that we start with our closest, we move out, and it's so important to be praying for local, um, national, international leadership in our world. Like, we need to be a part of what that means to hold that in prayer. So that's your, the, the tallest finger. Um, your ring finger is actually your weakest, um, the finger that doesn't, that is sort of like your, you know, your Achilles heel. Um, so the remembrance to pray for those who are sick, in need of help those who are, are um, like sort of the marginalized on the, on the edge of our lives. So to remember those people, and then your pinky is you. To remember, of course, to remember yourself in prayer. Sometimes it can be just you use your hand because you want to think of five different things, and some mornings it might be hard to find five things to pray about, and that is real and, and a part of our lives. So, so that's another thing. You know, we, do, we use it as a preschooler thing, but that really is something that we all can do together and do it in the moment. Um, let's see, I was talking about the Book of Common Prayer. I also will go to bookstores, use bookstores, and find just those compilations of prayers, those books that have just like a bazillion different um, prayers so that I can sort of have them in a stash, sometimes like finding a spot in my house um, so that I can, can just have prayers to sort of help lift me when, when it's a real, it's a reality that sometimes we don't have the words. Um, I'm getting over a, a, a head cold, so I apologize that I'm going to throw a cough drop in just in case I need to. Um, the thing that I think that is, I mean, all right, Frank, do you have a rule of life? You do? Um, I was hoping that the, that the answer was yes. All of us should. So, so does, does anybody know what I mean when I say a rule? First of all, before we go on. Um, what does anybody have anything that they're wondering about things that they'd like to say sort of areas of prayer that they actually are doing in their life that they would love to share with anyone does any anybody have something that's like to say I'm gonna check online and make sure again that we're all right I, I know that y'all are praying what do you do we go ahead yeah
Which one is that, Jeff? Five. All right, got it. Is it on? Good testing. All right. So I, I, I saw prayer as kind of a throwing hopes up into the sky, mm. right? And it was just like, you know, hey, just, uh, things are going bad, um, things I hope for, you know, maybe I'll throw it up in the concierge and the sky will, you know, answer when he wants. And I have gotten a different um, uh, idea about prayer in the last year, is that you pray to God knowing that he hears you and knowing that he intervenes on your behalf when it serves his will and his glory. And I'm praying differently for that in that way with that context. It's, you know, it's everything for God's glory. And, you know, if, if prayers are answered, it's because of God's glory. And if they're not answered, it's because of God's glory. It, we don't know the answer now, but we will. So. It's like a Garth Brooks song, Unanswered Prayers, right? Like it's, or, or it doesn't happen in the timing that we necessarily think that it should. That's, it's a good point, yeah. Um, for those who are... are can, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jeremy. I think one of the um, hardest yet most important uh, aspects of this is to um, do it consistently. Yes. To have a schedule, a plan. You know, I really like your suggestion of having the, the prayer on your mirror because then every morning you see it. So for us, uh, we uh, try to have devotions at 6 p.m. every night no matter what's happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way our kids sort of know to expect that. Uh, uh, they start wondering if something's going on if we don't call them down for devotions at 6 p.m. Uh, and so we do that and then we have dinner afterwards. But uh, just to have a, sort of a framework or a plan, uh, historically we've used the Compline service, so speaking of amazing services in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the prayer book, that's really a great one. More recently, we've gone to just reading a chapter or a couple chapters in the Bible and just working our way through the Bible and then praying at the end of it. So um, your, your comment, just get started or do something, yeah. is, uh, is really important for us. If we didn't have a schedule, it would probably fall by the wayside, but every night, 6 p.m., if we're there in the house, uh, we try to have devotions. Yeah, ritual is so key, right, in all of our lives, but yeah. It creates muscle memory. We talk about that with sports and other things, but if we are exercising and really um, creating those those rituals for our families and for ourselves, absolutely, absolutely. Anybody else have something that they were thinking about or wondering about or anxious about? So I was thinking about rules of, of rule of life, and that sounds kind of scary and intimidating, right? So rule not like a law, but rule more like a, a, like a measuring stick in terms of a guide or a straight line. And so one of the, the wonderful things that we have is the ability to create a rule of life so that, that you know, evening together would be a part of your family rule of life. We can have them as individuals, the ways that we would like to go about in our day and our world and different aspects, but then also we can be thinking about that with our families as well. What would a, a family rule of life look like? And so there's this wonderful website. It's called sacredordinarydays.com. And it is, um, so the ordinary days of the church are sort of like the, the our biggest season. So how do we sort of make these ordinary days, our ordinary days, more sacred? And part of what it talks about is to make a rule of life. And, and they give a really great um, definition. It says, a few simple statements that guide the posture of your life. I really love that, the posture. Not posturing, but like, how do we hold ourselves? How do we decide that our life is going to look like? What's going to be important to us? And so, as someone who is in the ordination process, this was something that we needed to do at the beginning. And, you know, in typical Emily form, I had created this spreadsheet you know, that had like the activity and then the frequency and then even like my ability to check in to see if I did it and all of these things. And my spiritual director said, I am exhausted. Like she literally gripped the table. Said, I'm exhausted just reading that. How are you going to do that much less? And so she goes, you're missing the point. It's not what you're going to do. It's how you're going to be. And so I invite you all to think about um, this week, think about three just very, very basic brief statements 
of how you just want to be. When you think about yourself as a child of God, what do you want to do? I mean, what, you know, how do you want to live that out? So for me, I took that big spreadsheet and I whittled it all the way down to three things. Um, they are be mindful about what goes into my body, be mindful about what goes out of my body, and making some space for God every day. So that's something that I can say out loud and I don't need to go back to a notebook to remind myself. You know, what, do, what, what goes into my body? I'm someone who really struggles with food and all that kind of stuff. So like, let me just be mindful about that. Um, I'm also someone who has a lot of free opinions. So I need to sometimes be mindful about what's coming out of my body. Um, and really, because I love life so much, I'm so tempted to fill it with stuff um, and forget to spend private time with God. So those are my three things. So I encourage you this week to think about it. We're not going to test you when you come back next week, are we? I don't know. Are we going to? Okay. Um, and that time with God can be prayer. It can be study. I think what I have really grown um, through is, is the use of podcasts. I wanted to not be that girl because I feel it kind of sounds obnoxious to be like, well, I really love this podcast. But um, the one that is, and again, this is another handout that I have for you. There's a whole list of podcasts and apps and some other things that m you might think about. The one that is just completely giving me life right now is um, Bishop Wright, who is the bishop, the Episcopal Bishop of Atlanta. And he does a podcast called For Life. And, um, and I listen to that thing... Sometimes I will listen to it four or five times because it is just so real and conversational. Um, I was someone who was listening to every like NPR, like quick five minute newscast, like, and I was just like realizing that like it was just amping me up like this and I was feeling really um, overwhelmed by like, what am I supposed to do in the world that is a world like this? And we need to know those things, but we also don't need to just completely saturate ourselves. Like, we need to remember that we live these God-soaked lives, and if we just would give some space to nourish those parts in our life. So I, there's a handful of those things on there. Again, um, for those who are joining us, there's a, a PDF of that. Um, and I would love to hear if there are ones that you like. So, you, I mean, I don't know if there, there are podcasts that you listen to can be like Brene Brown is another one that if you guys don't know Brene Brown actually is an Episcopalian which is kind of cool she's a, a an Episcopalian in, in Houston um, and has sort of made it onto the the big the big screen um, what, do you have anything else you want to say about a rule of life I mean I think I said something like this last week um, that you you just do it every day you know, like your devotions. I'm sure there's some evenings you all don't want to do it. Um, and that's the part you were talking about. You, you, know, you wish you were Jewish because you have Sabbath. You have, you have these, these moments in life that you mark. And so the, the same thing with, um, with your rule of life or how you're living with God each day. Whether you feel like doing it or not, do it. Yeah. Um, because it's not about your feelings. Uh, Jeremiah says the heart is deceptive among all things, deceitful above all things. And so don't worry about your emotions. Just spend the time. Mm -hmm. Just spend the time with God and let God use that time to change you and mold you into the person that he's created you to be. Or she. They. They, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think a little bit about like what Jeffrey was saying back there is that... Um, yeah, you just you sort of just need to do it, and you need to do it. And, and I had um, I have some close friends who are in the in the twelve step community, and they talk about how you're not so, when they were they were drinking, they were drinking at stuff. Um, and I find that sometimes people are praying at stuff because they want something very. They know what it is that they're yearning for, and they have an idea of how that should shake down. Um, but yeah, we just sort of need to figure out how to to know that it's not so much, sometimes it's the actual act of praying that is what changes us. The situation might not change, but the, but the, you know, the act of praying is, is really, really faithful. Um, I was going to talk about the examine. I know that we're running out of time, and so it really is an important thing um, to talk about in terms of spiritual uh, practices. So try to decide whether we should talk about, what do you think, Frank? Should we run through some of these real life spiritual practices first and come back to the examine to, uh, next week? Or what are you thinking? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. I mean, 
So I, I, I'm, I come, I love to sort of give a bunch of actual ideas. So you walk away thinking like, oh, I could do one, two, and three that we were talking about. So when we come back next week, we're going to talk about the examine, a way to sort of review our day as if we're, we're sort of doing that as, a, as a, a faithful practice along with kind of some people talk about like reviewing your day with Jesus. That sounds a little bit like a, like a talk show, but, um, but there are ways to sort of do that. So we'll talk about that next week. Um, if you are a reader, just consider what you could be reading that could actually be uh, enriching your life. So if you have little kids, it could be just as simple as swapping out the Eric Carle book, uh, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? with Adam, Adam, What Do You See? There's all kinds of things. If you just Google or you're looking on Amazon, there are ways to fill your bookshelves. Um, ooh, I thought that was off. Sorry, guys. Um, and, and be able to take what is normal reading time and really actually nurture your spiritual life. Um, if you are a commuter, again, that list of podcasts um, or, or even music, sometimes you can go onto things like Spotify or Apple Music and they will have, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be Churchy Jesus music, but it can just be popular music that will feed, um, feed your soul. Use your social media for inspiration instead of tearing people down. I think that that's a really important spiritual gift. And then surround yourself with people who are posting good stuff and repost things that you see that inspire you. So how can you um, attend to each other's spiritual lives on something that normally gets sort of a bad rap? Yeah? One oh six point nine. Is that like K-Love? Oh. <laughs> 106.9 is K-Love, that's right. So that so it's sort of modern Christian music, but it also and then it also sort of has their own versions of podcasting messages and that sort of thing. So yeah, I got in the car with my teenagers yesterday and and it was playing K-Love and they're like, "Oh, mom." I was like, "I don't know how it got on there, but isn't it lovely that you recognize that that's Jesus music, you heathens?" But um so, uh, yeah, anyway, so the idea of just having five minutes, whether it's in your bed in the morning, it's in the car, it is, you know, while you're brushing your teeth, there's nothing sacrilegious about that, as Frank said. Um, and it's not so much that you need to meditate, you just need to get quiet enough to see what shows up in your prayers, in your heart, um, just, just getting quiet enough to do that. Um, using meal times as a time to talk and pray. I, this is a part of the, my mommy life that I wish I did better, was to actually gather at a table and sit down and not just eat with each other at the countertop, but to really do um, some conversation about how was your day, that concept of highs and lows. Um, even just to light a candle at dinner will change. Light a candle at breakfast. If all you can do is gather for breakfast in the morning, light a candle at breakfast. That doesn't have to be a nighttime act. But then say, this is just a reminder that we have Jesus in the midst of us. Like, and that can just change the tone of the rest of the day for everybody. Um, tell a story. You know, tell a sacred story, but also tell the stories of your lives and recognize that our own lives are sacred. I have here, for all of you to take, a pack of post-it notes you can be leaving affirmations for one another. Even if you're a pre-reader, um, you can be leaving notes for one another around the house, inside the cabinets, on the, you know, in, in their closets, wherever the case may be. If you see something really beautiful about someone in your home, in your friend circle, let them know. And sometimes it's just easy to, to just leave a post-it note somewhere inside of a, you know, a notebook that they're gonna take to school. How amazing would it be if you opened up something and saw just this really short love note of why that person is, why you're important to someone. Um, create a sacred space in your house. We might talk a little bit about this tomorrow too. Like how do you, not that you like create an altar or a shrine, but how do you create a space that you can go to that you can, that just feels like it's right to be able to, to spend some time with God. Um, just trying to think of what else. We've got a ton of Bible studies, you guys like a ton that are online, that are in person, that are a bunch of different. We've got some leaders of those Bible studies here with us. Um, just trying to think of what else to say. I think the most important thing is what, is what we were saying is just start. 
whatever it is, like whether it's one prayer in the day, whether it's one chance to call a friend to do a high-low, whether it's a chance to um, leave one post-it note of an affirmation of, I see God in you this way. I think it's just those, those how do we, in, the, in real time, create sacred moments? So I'm trying to think, what else is on here? Did I give you everything? Yeah, everything else. I get told, talk to you about the. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the exam in next week. That's one of the handouts. But but um. Anything else, Frank? What are you thinking? I think we're right on time. No one had messaged in. On the emails. I I I don't want to have the last word. So you say something after me. But find a way to listen to your life. Yeah. You know, one of the things I do is turn the radio off when I'm in the car. So it's mindless enough that I know where I'm driving. But sometimes when you have some moments of quiet, you can listen to what's going on in your life better than if you're doing something or being being active. And that's then where you can talk to God, what what the heck is this? Yeah. Uh, so just being quiet um, is, is a good place. And don't be afraid of your life because God loves you. Sorry. Yeah, I think that this, that's exactly right. I think the thing to remember is that you already have everything that you need. You are a beloved child of God, um, and there are no no um, boundaries between God and us. And so I think that that's just that it's us taking the time to be able. We're the ones that sometimes make the uh, the barriers between God, not God to us. So I invite you to just just make yourself available. Um, start small and then just build. And so and do it together. I think that that's the biggest piece. You know, do it with your spouse, do it with your partner, your friends your children, um, even if your children are older. Um, it is never too late to start spiritual practices because actually you will be surprised, even our teenagers, maybe even more than most of us, are just yearning for a sense of, of being heard and being seen. So, so it's never, never too late. So we look forward to seeing you next week. And um, thank you all for coming.